This tiny PC was never meant to be a full-blown video editing workstation. But that didn't stop me from trying. This is the Minis Forum AI X1, a compact AI focused workstation. I don't know, what is this meant for? This is meant for business class work? Is this meant for working from home? Is this meant for just a replacement of a gaming PC? I'm not sure. And let me tell you why. I've used this thing for probably three weeks now. I was gonna go a full 30 days with it, but I just, I had to make the video. So what happened? Well, let's talk about what happened. What worked, what didn't work, what broke, how close it came to replacing my full-blown video editing workstation, and what the f is an NPU? All right, let's get this out of the way. Minis Forum sent me this PC to test out and bring videos to you for review. So anything I say here is my own opinion. They didn't pay me for any kind of video content. All they did was provide me a machine and said, check it out. So I did, and here I am. That being said, links are also down in the description for anything in this video, and a lot of them are probably affiliate links, so keep that in mind. First off, this little AI machine is not being marketed as replacing a $3,000 video editing rig. So let's talk about what it is and what it isn't. It's an AI-powered workstation or AI-enhanced workstation, probably for business use, Think spreadsheets and Zoom calls and Teams meetings, things like that. Maybe some light creative work, Photoshop, CapCut, InDesign, stuff like that. Maybe some light gaming as well. Realistically, for what you get, it is a hell of a machine, for the most part. What did I use this thing for? Well, my primary workstation currently, well, was an i9-9900KF. 64 gigs of DDR4, couple terabyte NVMEs, internal capture card, uh, and an RTX 3060 Ti. I use it for video editing and general workstation stuff because it's my daily driver, right? Now, when it comes to video editing, I'm not a huge graphics guy like this. I don't know, it was probably shitty, whatever I just put there. It's not really super intensive when it comes to the type of work that I do for this channel. So I thought replacing it with an AI PC would be easy peasy. And for the most part, I was not wrong. First off, Windows 10 goes end of support October 2025. That's this year, couple months away. So this machine has a Ryzen 7 260 CPU, a Radeon 780M GPU, GPU, 32 gigs of DDR5. Plus this model came with one terabyte NVMe storage. Now to be clear, this is the AI X1, not the X1 Pro. They're two different machines, very similar. The X1 Pro comes with a Ryzen 9 and more RAM and probably a bigger hard drive and extra stuff out of the box. Oh yeah, and the AI X1 Pro also has an inboard power supply where this one has an external power supply. So you gotta find somewhere to tuck that way too. So this model also came pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro. Perfect replacement for my Windows 10 workstation, right? Upon first boot up, you go in, of course it's going to ask you to set up a Microsoft account or use your Microsoft account. If you're like me, you've got a burner account that you just use for all of these logins anyway. Or, hear me out, as of right now, there's a workaround so that you can use a local account and not an online Windows account, which is kind of bullshit that they don't make that as an easy to click option from the start. So upon first setup and setting up a local user, I went in and debloated it to the best that I could and went ahead and installed the stuff that I knew I was gonna use. And from there, it just works. It's just like any other Windows machine for the most part. So the mini PC has an HDMI output, a display port output, two and a half gig ethernet, the power barrel connector, and then USB-C, USB four over USB-C. And then speaking of the front of the device, got two USB-A ports, a USB four over USB-C port, and a three and a half millimeter headphone jack or speaker output as I'm using it. And then the power buttons on the front where it should be. You can unscrew the bottom of the case from the rest of the chassis to get in and replace the NVMe or add to it. There's two NVMe slots in this tiny box. 
one of them actually can be used with an Oculink adapter. So if you do need something for heavy lifting, um, GPU wise, they make these external GPU docks where you can plug in a graphics card and a ATX power supply apparently, and then use a single cable that goes from the dock to the mini PC. To enable that in this, it's an extra part that comes with it that's just an NVMe to Oculink card basically and it slides right into that second NVMe slot. The thing I really appreciate about this is that to get into the machine itself you don't have to take off those rubber feet. The screw holes are outside of the rubber feet which means when you put it all back together it still stays put. A lot of these mini PCs like you have to rip off the rubber feet and there's screws underneath them but then when you put those rubber feet back on they never stay the same. They never stick in place again. I'm not bitter I swear. So minis forum good job thank you. It is appreciated. It's a little things that count. That's what she said. So how well did this work? Well, the last probably four videos, five videos I edited with this machine. Could you tell a difference? The workflow was very similar, and that's because my footage, like the footage that we have here, is stored on a network drive. In fact, started using my Zima Cube right over here. No matter what machine I use, whether it's this one or that one, or even, even my MacBook, I can just kind of pick up where I left off or edit anywhere in the house or anywhere that I've got an internet connection, I can get back to my LAN and edit my footage. So having that two and a half gig ethernet port is going to really help, even though right now everything's on a one gig LAN. We'll fix that over time, maybe, I hope. That's expensive. The workflow was fine. It wasn't really any different than the workflow on my primary workstation or on my old i9 PC till it came to multitasking. If I'm watching a YouTube video and I'm jumping back and forth between eBay and Amazon and Discord and Reddit, that video starts to get kind of choppy where it didn't do that on my i9 PC. Not enough where it makes me stop what I'm doing, but I notice it. It's like kind of glitchy. I went ahead and plugged in a power meter in line between my UPS and the workstation. At idle, it sits at like 15 watts. Under heavy load, we're looking around 50 to 60 watts maybe. And when it gets that much power draw, you do hear the fans spin up. Other than that, it's pretty freaking silent. Now compare that to my i9 PC where I'm looking at, I don't know, 50, 60 watts idle with all the things running in it, including my fans. I've got liquid cooling, so an AIO, the, the GPU, of course, and then everything else that I've got going in in that tower versus when I spin it up, man, that's that's getting 200 and something watts it, when, it, when it's rendering at full blast. So power consumption, mini PC. So I didn't realize this at first, but that Radeon 780M is actually only a two gig GPU of dedicated VRAM or VRAM equivalent. While it offers swapping, utilizing the system RAM for RAM intensive things versus eight gigs of dedicated VRAM on the 3060 Ti. So when it comes to horsepower, the i9 wins out on that one, which is to be expected. 32 gigs of DDR5 versus 64 gigs of DDR4. I still would like the 64 gigs. Windows at idle, uses like eight gigs of RAM sitting there waiting to do a thing. It's kind of ridiculous, Microsoft. So when you start getting into multitasking or layering tracks on top of each other using DaVinci or CapCut, it'll jump up to 12, 14 gigs of RAM used easy. I used 24, 32 plus gigs of RAM on my i9 PC from time to time. I haven't come that close on this, but I will. I know I will. While editing with this machine, I expected that when I would do something that was AI related in CapCut, whether it's creating captions or transcribing videos, putting in, you know, flashy backgrounds or effects, I was expecting my NPU to actually start utilizing some of that workload. And it didn't. In fact, everything I've done on this PC, I haven't seen my NPU even budge. Now, looking into it a little bit further, I guess CapCut does not have that feature enabled yet. Like, it doesn't take advantage of an NPU within a system at this point. I did take a Zoom call, or a Google Meets call, I guess it was, using this thing, and the NPU didn't work there either. So I'm wondering what that NPU is even doing back there. So at the end of the day, this AIX1 PC is not a GPU slayer. It is not an exact 
like for like replacement of a large dedicated video editing machine. But does it work for me and my workflows? I'd give it about an 80% there just because of the way I'm used to working on a machine that has plenty of room to run where this one, that hallway it's running in is a little bit narrower, if that makes sense. I mean, it, it does prove that you can get some real creative and content creating workout without a giant three fan GPU monstrous machine. I think that's kind of cool. Understanding the footprint and the size difference between these two machines, how much they actually cram into this. I feel like the AI X1 Pro would get me maybe another 10 to 12% closer to that 100% feel. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you've tried editing or streaming on mini PCs like this. I want to hear some horror stories and some success cases. Fuck words are hard. Also, let me know what you think I should test this machine with next. I'm thinking LM Studio, maybe Olama, and give me some ideas on how I can test this NPU. Like, fucking wake up, little buddy.